Hey there, you're watching Dirt Bike Channel, you made it. I'm your host Kyle Brotherson. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to install the tubeless setup on your bike. It's been several years since I've done an installation video like this and I wanted to refresh it, so stick around. Like I said, it's been several years since I've done a video like this and I wanted to do a little bit of an update because I get a lot of questions about how to install uh, tubeless. And your first time through, it is definitely a different process. And so it's something that you'll get better with over time. And I've gotten to the point now where I can crank these things out and I have almost zero problem most of the time getting it to work perfectly the first time. So that which you persist in doing will become easier. Uh, let, you, let not your heart be troubled on that. I wanted to show you kind of how I do this. It's very similar to the how uh, Tubeless uh, shows you how to do it on the instructions. So watch this video first before you install it. Watch their videos on New Tech. Uh, if, you, if you Google that, you can see their videos. And, but this is how I do it, kind of how I've kind of evolved into getting this done. Let me bring you in closer to the bench and show you the tools that you're going to need. Before I get too far into this, I just want to mention that I have all the links to most of these tools down in the video description. And if you would use those links, that would help help uh, me out a ton. That's how I support my family. It won't cost you anything extra, but it, it will help you to get some of this stuff. Um, and, and help me out. So you're first gonna need you know, a tubeless. This is a tubeless for the rear. This is an 18 inch tubeless. Comes with everything that you need as far as the inner bladder, you know, the outer bladder, and then there's uh, some, there's the rim tape in here, and there's a, like a tire installation tool in there. You're also gonna need an 11 millimeter drill bit or a 7 16 drill bit, because you are gonna have to drill out uh, your rim so that your new um, rim lock and, you know, air valve here is going to be able to work this you're going to have a low pressure air uh, chamber and a high pressure air chamber this low pressure air chamber we need to drill out our rim so that's where the 11 min, 11 millimeter or 7 16 inch uh, drill bit come in really helps if you have a motion pro bead buddy um, you're going to need a 14 millimeter uh, socket or end wrench you're going to need a valve core remover uh, sometimes you might have a valve core remover on your actual um, valve caps uh, you're going to need all I, I've got four of these things out here. You don't need four. You're really going to need two or three um, spoons, tire spoons. I like these Motion Pro tire spoons. Tusk also makes these ones are actually made by Tusk. They have the little bit of a rubberized handle on handle on them. I like those. Probably it wouldn't it wouldn't hurt if you had a razor knife or a box cutter in order to do that. Um, it's also going to help if you have a tire pump. Now this is literally just a mountain bike tire pump. And the reason why I like these is you can easily pump this up to over 100, 110 PSI, which you're going to need to be able to do. And then I've also got a tire gauge here for the low pressure side. Um, I've got armor all for lubricant. This is basically all the lubricant that I use. I don't use anything other than armor all right now to put everything together. And then obviously I'm going to have to have some shop towels to keep things clean. The fruit snacks are not necessarily uh, critical to this, but it's one of the best things about having kids at your house is it's a good excuse to have fruit snacks kicking around because you never know when you're going to get hungry and need a little shot of sugar. Okay, so that pretty much covers the tools that we're going to use. Let's get into this. Okay, step one is to drill out one of the holes. Now, usually your bike, usually your bike is going to have a two different holes in the rim. So it's going to have one here for the high pressure and one here for the low pressure. If it's a KTM, these are going to be closer together. It'll be like here and here or Husqvarna. But since this is, this is a Tusk wheel set that I was using uh, with moose bibs. Now I'm not, I'm going to put it back uh, and do and install tubeless on this. I had actually epoxied this little plug in here. So I'm just going to drill that plug out. This is my uh, drill bit. I keep this drill bit essentially on this drill at all times because I'm doing this all the time. Okay, now I'm going to clean this up and uh, come right back to you. I'm going to get a vacuum and blow this out and then clean this hole up a little bit.
Okay, so now it's time to put our rim tape on. Now, this is a good time to clean the rim up. If this rim has ever been used before, we wanna get all the oil and all the grime and all the dirt out of here. So I will actually take these in the house with a scrubbing brush and scrub this with soap and water to get all the little you know, oil and everything out of here. Otherwise, this rim tape isn't gonna to wanna to stick good and you're not gonna have you know, a good outcome. So I scrub it down with soap and water and then I dry it off and I blow it out with compressed air to make sure everything, you know, is dry. And then I'll just grab this rim tape. Now they changed this rim tape. This rim tape used to be, they used to have a different style rim tape and their instructions used to say at New Tech and Tubeless, they used to say, just go around the rim one time um, and only overlap it by a couple of inches. Well, they have since modified that. And in the last few years with the Gen 2 Tubeless uh, that we're getting, you're gonna use this rim tape and you're gonna go all the way around. And what you're gonna do, you're gonna go all the way around three times, actually. What you're gonna do is the first time, you're gonna be right down here in the drop center, in the drop center of, of your rim. Right in the center of it is where you're gonna to wanna to be, right? And then the second time around, you're gonna angle it, and I'll bring you in closer here in just a second. You're gonna angle this so that you go up on one side of one side of the, the shoulder here, and I need to show you that right now, because we're gonna go on one side of the shoulder, then we're gonna go on the other side of the shoulder, so you're triple taping this whole thing. Let me show you. So as I said, the first time we're gonna be right in the middle of the drop center, and now I'm gonna actually take it and bring it over here, and I'm gonna come just up to the top of this shoulder, right? The top of the shoulder of my drop center. And I'm gonna go around all the way, like that, and this takes a little bit of time. You gotta just work your way around slowly. This is the most tedious part of the entire process, and I'm, obviously I'm trying to get this to stick down. Um, but this part you have to go a little bit slow on. Okay, you'll see, I don't like that. I was climbing up too high. You wanna just stay right here, so you're not up onto the shoulder, you're just up to the corner of that. And, I'm gonna be quiet now. I'm gonna go all the way around one time. And then as soon as I've, I've gone all the way around, I'll go up on, onto the other shoulder. Okay, now I'm right there. I'm gonna slide over to the other shoulder, make that transition right in there. Right up, about up in there. And work my way around there. And so I'll have worked away, my way around this thing three times and it holds, uh, these things do so much better uh, when you do this uh, newer taping style than, than they used to. This is way better than before. Okay, now I'm all the way around. I'm just gonna come back down into the middle and I've gone around three times, that's all I really need to do. Got a little bit more tape. Just make sure I'm good there. I'm gonna use my razor knife and cut this. Like that. And then just make sure that this thing is all the way down. All the way around. Just go work it really good. Make sure it's stuck down. Next thing I need to do is uh, find my holes for my, um, here we go. I'm gonna cut out, cut out the holes for my high pressure and low pressure side right here. Use my razor knife and then just kind of carve out the hole. This doesn't have to be perfect. I used to, I used to get really particular about how, you know, I clean this up, but now I'm not as, particular and just kind of make a jagged hole here. It doesn't look super pretty sometimes when I'm done, but I've got a hole. So I'm going to do this one, get that one. And then I've got the other side. Where's that other side right here? That's right there. Poke that one out. Okay, at this point, we've got to line up our low pressure side um, and our high pressure side. So the low pressure side is the one that you drilled out, and here's that hole for me. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this out, remove this, and I need to line 
these guys up. Like I said, on, on a lot of the KTMs, these holes are gonna be about four or five spokes apart. On this um, tusk wheel set, because it's more of like a Japanese style thing, it's, they're almost opposite each other. So my high pressure side is gonna be way over here. My low pressure side is gonna be way over here. So I line it up on my rim. I'm like, I'm lining this up exactly with where my, this has got to go through. And then I'm gonna take this um, bladder and I'm gonna line that up and put that right here because I know my hole is right here. So I've got to get these things lined up. The easiest way to do this is once you have it lined up, then I'm going to stuff this inside my inner bladder inside of this, inside of the, the carcass here, right where the rim lock is, because it's a super tight fit right there. And then I'm going to just stuff this inner bladder inside of that liner. And then I'm going to double check it. I'm going to say, look, I'm eyeballing this and I'm going, now I know it's way off. I know this has to move around. It's got to move about a little bit. So now eyeball that again. It still has to move more. I'm going to move this over a little bit. Squeeze that in. Look and see how that did it. Now I'm getting really close. That looks like it's going to work. So I'm going to take this out, take this nut off here, set that aside. I'm also going to take this cap off and this thing right here, this little keeper nut thing. Don't lose that. I'm going to set that aside for just a second. Now I'm going to armor all this entire thing. I'm just going to spray. You'll see this. I'm just using armor all. I'm just going to spray the entire thing because what I want to do is I want to lubricate this. All right. So I want everything to be slick, slick as snot. Make sure that that's on there all the way. And then I'm going to carefully put this in and it's a little easier on the, on the KTM, the European wheel sets where these things are super close together because you would be able to stuff it in here and then stuff the other side in here. I'm going to have to work this around a little bit and it's harder to do it this way because I've got to get this inside of that other side. It's way easier if it's right here. Most of your KTMs are going to, are going to be like that? So we got to get that inside here. And this is, like I said, it's more, a little bit more difficult on these guys. But not impossible, certainly. See how I got that to poke through? Now I'm going to put that little nut thing. It's not really a nut, but that like threaded washer. It's kind of like what it is. There we go. I'll put that on. That way that'll keep from coming out. And now I'm gonna use just a little bit more of the armor all. The thing, one of the tricks is to pinch the bladder and always pinch it down into the drop center of the rim. That gives you the most uh, leeway here. Let me just make sure we're still in the camera frame. I think we are. Just slide this over just to touch. Yeah. Okay. So in the videos, they talk about how you should be able to put this whole thing on with um, basically using your hands and you might need a spoon for the last little bit. Yeah. I've never really been able to get it all the way on, um, but I'm just uber careful. So at this point, I'm putting it on the last couple of things around here, just making small bites and making sure that I pinch this on the edges so it stays down in the drop center, right? And I'm getting all the way under with this and doing just carefully coming over, carefully coming ar around and getting this. And again, pinch it down to make sure you've got all the slack and all the leeway that you can possibly have. And voila, There's, we're caught just a little bit. I should be able to run that over with my hand. There I go. Boom. And it's on. So mostly by hand, it's all the way on. And then what I do now to make sure a hundred percent sure I haven't damaged this 
is I will go ahead and I will air this up right now to check and see if I have caused any problems to that inner bladder. Okay, here's my high pressure chamber. Valve core is still in. I'm gonna go ahead and just air this up. And I know that my air compressor can't put more than about 90 pounds in that. And it's not leaking. So you can see, this is how this thing works. When you, when you turn, I don't know how well you can see that. When you, when you pump this air chamber up inside here, it expands and it forces the tire against, to make a seal against the bead. It's pretty stinking awesome. I think actually the seal happens between the, the chamber right here and the actual inside bead of the tire. So that's what is making this whole thing work. And I know I haven't punctured anything because no air is coming out. If there was a problem with that inner bladder, you'd have massive air leaking right now. I don't have any air leaking, so I know I'm good to go to, get, to carry on to the next step. Before I get too carried away, I, I should mention that you need to let the air out now. Otherwise, you won't be able to finish this. Okay, now I got all my air out and I'll put my valve core back in and move to the next step. Okay, so now we're ready to put, uh, put our rim inside the tire. So they give you this cool tool right here. Basically what you do is you put this kind of down in the bottom of your tire like that. That helps this to not slide off. And then I'm gonna take my rim lock because this is my new rim lock and I'm gonna start with that. One of the things I've learned to do is just sort of sit on the tire. So I use the weight of my own, my own body weight to sit on the tire and that kind of opens up the bottom of this, okay? And it makes it super easy. So then I will stick the bottom of that in there and I'm just gonna use one tire iron. I'm gonna start spooning the tire in and I'm constantly putting pressure on the tire with my body weight and then with my left hand, my free hand, I'm pushing down on the rim and I slowly just spoon this sucker on all the way around. And it's just slow going at first. And I only need one spoon because I only have one free hand. I used to, um, I used to lube the tire with the armor roll but I found it doesn't really matter too much whether I lube it or not. Sometimes it's better if I don't lube it because then it doesn't slip off as easily. We're making progress, we're almost there. And we are actually in. Simple as that. If I go like this, that'll drop out and we're in. Now we get to actually start spooning this sucker on to the rim. Okay, so we're gonna now spoon the tire onto the rim. And this is where I am going to use a liberal amount of my Armor All. Again, this is the only lubricant that I use at this point. If I can get this thing to come out, come on, man. Of course that would happen on camera. Okay, so now I've got this thing nice and lubed and I'm gonna start here at my rim lock. This is where my low pressure chamber is right here, where my rim lock is. And I like to throw in a bead buddy right here and I'm gonna work around this way and I'm gonna finish at this rim lock. So I'll throw in my bead buddy there and it just makes it easy um, for me to keep the tire on the bead and keep it from slipping around, you know? And so I'm just gonna slowly start spooning this on and it's pretty easy. You wanna make sure that your tire stays down in the drop center. That's a tip whether you're doing tubeless or tubes, either way. You wanna make sure that you get as much of that tire down in the drop center of the rim. And this is the Shinco 525 Cheater tire. There's also a lot, and this is a brand new tire. There's also a lot of controversy about whether or not you can use a, a used tire. Here's what I will say. Whenever I get a bike that I'm gonna keep for a while, I put, uh, see, we're, we're done with that. I'll take the tire, a lot of times, most of the times, I'll take the tires off, the Dunlop AT81s, uh, if it's KTM or whatever, uh, or a Yamaha, I'll take the tire right off and install tubeless on it and then put the tire back on. Now, why can I do that? I can do that because I can take the tire apart without damaging it, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and just lube 
this side up. So if you can take the tire apart without breaking or tearing the bead, then you're good to go to use that tire again um, in the future with tubeless. So I don't always do it with, I don't always put these things together with, with, uh, with a brand new tire. It's good if you're using a new tire, um, but even if a tire has, you know, an hour or two on it, you can still take it apart if you're careful and do this, right? So the main thing is just to, once you get this down enough, you're going to make sure that you get, just take small bites, go slow. Don't dig in there too much. It also helps to have these type of tire irons um, that don't have a sharp lip on them, right? So you're just going to hook it in there barely and keep spooning that on. Keep this down in the drop center. Not too... There's not too much to it. And yes, it's gonna get really tight over here at the end, just like it would any other time with, you know, tubes. And you just wanna be careful, okay? So this is where I'll use another, another uh, tire iron. As you can see, I'm gonna work back around and try to force this tire down into the drop center, which gives you just enough just enough leeway for your next bite to happen. Sometimes you might need to keep this tire iron in and then slide this other one here. Give yourself a little bite and then come back over on both of them like that. Putting tires on is, is the place that I tear the bead. It's not taking tires off. So, so that's where, that's why I say it's totally normal. And this is where you might want a third one because you might then need to keep this one in, that one in, and then come back around and then just push everything down. Give it one more good kind of squeeze down. Because we've got a couple more bites we're going to have to have. Actually, this one might. Oh, we're so close. So close. And sometimes that happens where you get here and you've just got just like a teeny little thing. We are so close. And sometimes, sometimes you can just, of course that would happen when I go to film this. I'm gonna have to get that in. Figure out a way. There we go. And down. Make it hard. Here's, here's one more trick. Because this, it's a good thing all the hard stuff happened when I've got it filmed, when I've got the camera rolling. Because we've got just a little bit of a thing. Bam. Mallet and it's down. So I showed you the most difficult way that it can be. Okay, this is where I'm gonna deviate from the instructions from New Tech because they are gonna tell you to use soapy water. I don't use soapy water anymore. I just get liberal, very liberal with the, with the armor all here. So I will go all the way around the tire and, and kind of pull it down with my tire iron and get, get um, the armor all in here on both sides of the tire. So you can see kind of what I'm doing, how I'm getting that in there. I'm gonna flip this over, do the other side of the tire, and then I'm gonna air it up. Watch this. The reason I don't use the soapy water anymore is because sometimes I'll put tire slime in here or I'll put this uh, Stan's No Tubes tire sealant in there. And with the soapy water, it doesn't work as well when you're putting something in the tire to help kind of seal uh, small punctures. So I'm gonna come over here, <clears throat> got my air compressor, but you can do this with, with the bike pump and I'll need the bike pump here in just a second because my air compressor won't put 110 PSI in this. I'm just gonna go ahead, go in my high pressure chamber. Boom, see that pop up? It doesn't always do that, but now I've got about 85 or 90 PSI in that, in that uh, high pressure chamber and it forces, forces the bead to come all the way out um, and make contact. 
Then I'm gonna take my low pressure side and you notice I still have my rim lock not tightened. Right here, the rim lock has not been tightened. I'm gonna go ahead and put some air in the low pressure chamber. And I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put about, I don't know, 25 or 30 PSI in there. Okay, now I've got, what, 30 PSI in, in that chamber. You'll notice that this thing popped, the bead popped all the way up and now I've, this is where the towels come in. I've gotta wipe up a bunch of this armor all that just popped out. And that sucker is, has made a very good seal. I cannot tell you how good of a seal I feel that armor all helps to make the tire because it just it just pops up there and you know so the the point is use a lot of it be liberal all the way around that way i only know i know i only need one thing to get this uh together which is armor i'm not needing to worry about soap and water and all that other stuff if you do have a problem where it's not uh, coming up and sealing um, a lot of times you'll have to take the tire all the way back off and kind of start over again and put it back on. Probably one out of every 10 that I do, I'll have a problem where I have air coming out one of the, one of the sides. And it isn't because I've punctured anything, it's just that I screwed something up somewhere. Usually it's because you've got a tear in the bead and it's not making perfect contact. So I'm just gonna tighten this down. If you want, you can use a torque wrench, but this is your rim lock. And this doesn't need to be super uber tight, guys, because the, um, the high pressure air chamber itself is, is actually doing most of the work for us. I put my blue cap uh, on the low pressure side. I put my red cap on the high pressure side. And then that little nut right here, I'll bring you into a shot of this closer. This, this little uh, washer nut thing, that's supposed to go up against the valve cap, not down against the rim. And this sucker is pretty much good to go. If you were going to put in um, like slime, the green slime or the, the stands, uh, no tubes tire sealant, this would be when you would do that. You would relieve the pressure out of the, out of the, low, lo, the low pressure chamber. You take the valve core out and you'd put your slime in here. You know, you'd move it like this and you'd squeeze your slime down in there or you'd squeeze your stands, no tube sealant. I use this uh, a lot. You'd squeeze it into the low pressure chamber and then kind of get it all the, worked all the way around. Um, on this one, I'm not gonna do that. The last thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make sure that I've got plenty of air in the high pressure side. And I do that with my um, trusty bike pump. I've got a couple of these bike pumps because they're so convenient. I take these bike pumps with me every time I go out riding because it's so easy to get the high pressure uh, chamber there because it had about 90 PSI. So I'm gonna go up to 110 right there and then I'm good to go on that. So this thing is now ready to, this is my spare, um, but it's now ready to go in the trailer as my spare tire in case we have any troubles. Otherwise it would be ready to go on the bike. Obviously I've got too much air pressure in here. I like to run these things down to, you know, like five PSI. And so I would let this, I let the low pressure chamber out down to five PSI. Um, and then I'd run it. I just, I just put it up to like 30 PSI in order to kind of set the bead and everything. And I'll leave it on 30 PSI right now. And then when I go to ride the bike, I'll drop it down um, to five. So that's pretty much it. So that was a long video. Thanks for sticking with me. If you're one of the very, very few who've stuck with a video this long, please know that I so appreciate your support. If you would mind, wouldn't mind using the links down in the video description to support me, that would be fantastic. I've also got links over at dirtbikechannel.com. Uh, you can see uh, dirtbikechannel.com slash parts, or there's a links thing right up there in the side corner where you can figure out how to support me. You can support my videos on Patreon. This is how I'm supporting my family now, guys. So without your support, this, this, this stuff goes away and I go back into corporate America and get another job. Um, just wanted to point out though that um, this bike right here, this bike is a bike that you guys begged that you overwhelmingly said that you wanted to see as a sweepstakes bike that you could get, that you could win. Um, don't want to make any super announcements right now, but um, okay, this bike is one of those bikes that I'm going to be giving away. And that one over there, that Honda, 
that might be given away too. So anyway, just wanted to get a sneak peek for you guys that stayed to, stayed to the end of this video. That gives you some motivation to stay to the end of some of these other videos in case I give away nuggets like that as well. Please like these videos, subscribe, share them with your friends, and get out there and ride. I chose the rear, the rear tire to do this. Now I gotta go do it to the same thing with the front tire. And uh, these tusk wheel sets are pretty awesome. I bought all of this stuff um, that I used today. Uh, to put on so I don't get paid to do it. This isn't a paid review. This isn't a paid uh, video. The only way I get paid is if you guys watch these videos and if you guys use the links down in the description. Thanks so much and we'll see you in the next video. These fruit snacks really are really good. Just what the doctor ordered. <laughs>